What's up guys? Sometimes around Christmas time, when I'm winding down work-wise, what I like to do is dabble in new games. Sometimes I download new games from Steam and play them. Sometimes I take up some other weird variant of poker, like a few years ago I decided I would become an 8 game player, and I pretty much failed miserably to ever embark on that fully. But today, I've decided to bring you some special festive content, and I want to show you a bit of heads up. I'm not a complete amateur. Heads up, first off, I think that Heads Up and Six Max share a lot of things in common. I think Heads Up is a much swingier, crazier game where you have to do battle with the incredibly wide ranges like the one you see on your screen here. So I actually have a table of Heads Up ready to go, but before I jump into that, I want to show you the nuts and bolts. I want to lay out the bare bones of the ranges we're going to be roughly following as we play 50 Zoom Heads Up. This is the Heads Up game that's running right now. I also didn't feel like I wanted to jump into like a 200 or 500 game when I don't really know so much what I'm doing heads up compared with 6 max. But excuses aside, my own fears and anxieties aside, here are some of the ranges we're going to be using today. This first one you see on your screen is an opening range from the button. This is actually solved for the rake at 100 zoom heads up. So pretty damn similar, 50 zoom heads up, maybe you need to be like microscopically tighter, but it's not going to make a massive difference. I have forged many of these preflop ranges from this program you see here, which is called Simple Preflop. I've used it to build a ton of these strategies. I sell them on my website, carrotconnor.com. So if you want to take up Heads Up, you can actually buy a PDF and corresponding text file of Heads Up ranges on the website. You can also pick up ranges for six max, and they are tailored to the rake that you pay at the stakes that you play. So this range, as you can see, is really, really wide. We're opening things as bad as 10-4 offsuit, jack-3 offsuit, 5-3 off. To understand this, just remember that in Heads Up, the first player to act, who is the small blind, is also the button. So the preflop raiser, not only are they raising into only one other opponent, like in the small blind and six max, but the main difference is that they have position throughout the rest of the hand after that. This allows them to play way more hands than the small blind would be playing in a normal six max game. There's also another phenomenon here that there are less bad cards folded dead, if you will which gives the player in the big blind a slightly weaker range on average than they would have in a six max game when it's folded to small blind there, though that's a kind of negligible effect. So that's the first range I want to show you. If our opponent opens 2.5x, this is the 2.5x opening range, by the way, this is how we're meant to react. So green here is going to be call, bold is going to be gray, and of course, three bet to 10 big blinds from 2.5 to 10, that's going to be our rough sizing, is in orange here. So the first thing you'll notice is that defending some pretty awful hands like 5-4 off is actually break even. 10-7 off, queen 7 off, 9-3 suited, all break even calls there or thereabouts. If you look at the EV view, I can tell you that that's actually just winning about 3% to 2.5% of a big blind, something like that. So minuscule amount, but winning to call a hand like the 9-3 suited. Also, what you're going to want to do here is remember to 3-bit bluff a lot. There is a kind of island of green. We could call it a median, if you will. A hand like queen six, for example, is a slightly better call than it is a three bet. But basically the upshot here, the conclusion is that you want to three bet really aggressively for value. You want to be three betting tons of hands like a six suited and things like that. But you also want to be three betting aggressively as a bluff. So that means using some low suited cards, things like eight, six, eight, five, eight, four. I'm gonna try and remember that these ones are really high frequency. I don't think they have to be pure, the EV difference is basically negligible between calling and 3-betting, as long as you don't fold these hands you won't make a mistake, but you do want to apply a lot of pressure and I think by far the most common leak in a recreational player or maybe not so skilled regulars game is that they just won't be making enough of these, these sort of low EV 3-bet bluffs that are the same EV as calling. We also have another sort of hybrid 3-bet range which is things like King-10 off, Ace-9 off, Ace-8 off. These hands are probably somewhere in between value and bluff, like when they garner fold equity, they're getting really useful fold equity, however their primary purpose is obviously to make the opponent fold a worse hand rather than a better one. That said, we can cause our opponent to fold hands that are very equity rich against us here, and we can also get called by hands that we're in decent shape against. Remember, Villain will be defending the 6-4 suited to our 3-bet and heads up, and therefore we're going to be able to actually be a favourite with hands like Ace-9 off when we 3-bet. Contrast that to 6-max, where you can't really do that. So on to how Big Blind is going to react now. After the 3-bet from Big Blind, how is Small Blind going to react? So this is a sort of strategy that's being recommended, as you can see, the solver is very wary about opening the action up again here to be jammed on. 
there are many hands in the sea of green, this lagoon of green, that are just basically way, way better to call than they are to 4-bet, and that's because if they 4-bet, it's not really clear what they're doing. I guess they'd be bluffing if you 4-bet 10 suited here, you'd be bluffing, but it's actually a very severe loss of EV because you're reopening the action. You will face a jam a lot, and you have a hand that's an incredibly profitable lucrative call. This is something that's to be avoided. What do you want to 4-bet then? Well, you don't want to 4-bet that often in heads up. You want to 4-bet value hands like 9s plus ace queen suited ace queen off plus. Everything below that is just in the sort of depolarization zone that has to call. And then we're going to have a few weird bluffing hands thrown in. Don't take this too literally, guys. It's not that you can only use queen 4 and jack 6. This is just the outcome this sim has landed on after churning away for a day or two and coming up with a solution that's really accurate. This is an equilibrium that's designed so that these frequencies are unexploitable. Obviously, you could mix and match this a little bit, but the main takeaways here are the offsuit kings, offsuit aces, and some random big card, small card hands. You could remember the queen 4 and jack 6 specifically, or if you thought your opponent was folding a bit too much to 4 bets or not jamming enough, you could actually mix in way more of hands of this ilk. What happens after we 4 bet then? Well, big blind is supposed to re-jam sometimes, and they're meant to be mixing jam with pocket pairs. This is the sort of thing an unprepared opponent will not usually be doing. As you can see, the solver's being extremely precise about jamming exactly king jack suited, ace queen off, king 10 suited sometimes. Again, you can probably search around for hands that don't have much of an EV difference, like ace 3 for example, ace 4, these are only slightly better to call than they are to jam when I'm looking at the EV here. So again, you could adjust the strategy based on how you think your opponent is playing, but that's the rough lay of the land that you do want to be jamming kind of aggressively here, and we're going to do that today. We're going to look to spot who the regulars are, who are probably playing something closer to a GTO preflop strategy, and then who the recreational players are who are not going to be doing that so well. But with that all said and done, that little bit of preparation out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the pool and get the cards in the air here. So there are currently eight players in this heads up pool. I'm hoping it doesn't break before we have a bit of fun here. So let's jump in and see what we can do. Okay, so first hand, we're actually facing someone who is 3xing. I don't know whether this player is regular or recreational as of yet. I think Jack-9, just thinking back to my ranges there, is probably a hand we usually just want to be calling with. I think you can 3-bet some hands like this. I think this one might be slightly too mediocre, but I don't really remember. What I tend not to do is try to look at charts while I'm playing. You can debate the sort of ethics of this in the chat. I prefer not to do it. It's just a, a grey zone I like to stay clear of. Bill and Snap checks back on this board. I think the way I would play this turn normally is just having some very big bets and some checks. This hand is definitely good enough to bet small with, but I'm not going to build small bet here. But when Villain does check multiple times and Snap checks, I think my hand is very strong and I'm going to go for B75 on the river. I also think it's really unlikely that we're going to get bluffed on this node. That's lovely, he throws no mana at us. I'll throw... Oh, I don't get to throw something back. I'm going to throw some poo at this opponent instead then. Oh, it's the same guy. Perfect. And I even wiped up for him too. That's kind. Have a bit of fun with the throwables here on Christmas. Okay, different player here. So that player that snap checks back twice and then throws a snowman, I believe to be recreational. You can let me know what your population reads would be on such a thing. But I would guess that's a recreational action. Although he does seem to be playing lots of tables. He's like snap acting though. It's almost like it's a robot. I hope not, and I'm not accusing him of being a robot, but this kind of action is just so ridiculously fast. Anyway, King, Bean7, Monotone. I think deuces can certainly bet with or without a spade. I'm going to mix in a little bit of bet with this, but usually check. I think this is a combo that whatever my range is betting at here globally, this hand will be betting less frequently. I do think I can apply quite a lot of aggression in general though. Okay, turns out this player is actually just some regular. I'm going to give him the strong reg tag for now, because he did throw a snowman quite strongly, quite powerfully. I mean, I really felt it when it hit me in the face, that snowman. Imagine being hit in the face by an entire snowman. Queen 7 offsuit. I think this is right on the borderline between calling and folding. I'm going to go ahead and fold. I think retrospectively checking a range, I have no problem with that. Queen 7 off is actually a mix between call and fold. Yep, so that one is, is fine. 5-6 looks like an open to me. I think the opening range is going to extend all the way down to some of these really bad cards as long as they're connected. I think on Queen Jack 7 I'll play a large bet strategy. I want to bet this a bit more than my normal frequency. Let's bet this about two thirds of the time. Let's just bet, because the RNG is refusing to give me a new number. Having a few teething problems, apparently playing heads up is breaking my software for some reason. And on the turn, turning this gutter, I think we want to bet quite high frequency. I'm going to go for an over bet here with this hand. I should probably check sometimes, but I don't have an RNG to mix it. I'll try and fix that now. 
I'll play this hand and then I'll, I'll do a bit of messing around with it and see if I can fix it. I'll get threes with a spade against Big Bet here. I think we probably have to continue. It will be getting kind of close, but I think it heads up with the spade here we want to call. This isn't a call I would make in 6 max. I think this is a hand that's probably swinging between call and fold. I think this is a clear fold on the 6th turn. This is a good card for my range, not a great one for villains. And this is about as lousy as my continues can be in terms of improvability. Right, I'll be right back, hopefully with my RNG working. I thought I would actually bring the RNG onto the screen for you guys. Let me give this guy the weaker player attack. Nice to see some recreationals kicking about, swimming about in the pool this morning. But yeah, I thought I would put it on screen for you. I can also change it by clicking it. So as you see, when my mouse randomly appears here, it's actually because it's in a different place on my screen than what you would think. 8, 7 off. Is this a call against 3x against the stack size? I'm going to go with no, not quite. Was I right? I like to test myself and then see if I was right rather than just looking. Actually, I should be calling that against 2.5. I can fold 8, 6, but I have to call 8, 7 and 7, 6, and I can start folding 6, 5. Interesting. So as you can see already, my 6 max inclinations are causing me to be too tight and heads up, which is basically what's going to happen with every single 6 max player when they start playing heads up for the most part. 754, I believe this is a fairly bad board against someone that isn't 3-bet bluffing enough pre because they're going to have too many of these cards that they're not putting into the 3-bet range. We saw it in our ranges that 6-8 suited was a pure 3-bet, for example. That said, I still want to bet this hand a lot. I'm going to go for small bets on this board and I'm going to bet this about 50% of the time which is a lot more than I would be betting most hands. The reason I want to bet this more frequently when concocting like a GTO based strategy is simply that the hand is doing rather well in this situation. It's got a lot of backdoor potential, front door potential, and it, it just performs well in big pots sometimes with the king of spades It also blocks my opponent's continues. I think the turn is going to be a high frequency bet. I don't think I have that much showdown value on this card. I will just use B75 on this card. The reason I think that that's a bet is that it's not like it's King Queen that's going to block folding range, be kind of lousy, and also show down for some pot share. That hand is going to show down for basically no pot share at all. Ace nine, I believe, is pure call. Was that correct? No, that's one of our value hybrid three bets. It's going to take me a while to just get this into my head. I'm going to be playing a really bad preflop strategy until I actually get used to it. But I'm trying to guess, estimate, really push myself, and then double check with the ranges rather than just looking at ranges while I'm playing. Like I said, there's a few ethical concerns with that. I don't know whether it's allowed on stars. I forget the exact ruling, so I'm just staying clear of it. But I also don't think it's the best way to learn. I don't think being spoon-fed is particularly good. Can I value bet ace nine here? I don't think so. I think I just check. It's a little bit close, but I don't think I can. And against the lay delay pot, this is kind of interesting. We have the right kind of blocker here in the nine of diamonds. The lay delay pot could be a line that's being built because villain is looking to garner loads of fold equity. Or it could be a line that's being built because Villain is just going to be greedy and have made a, a good hand like Jack 3 on the river. I thought I would call just to try and find out what that player is doing. If they're recreational, I would fold to check check pot because it's a line that is just kind of making up for lost ground most of the time. If they're irregular, I think it's closer. And I do like having busted flush draw on that node because it will unblock the hands that Villain waits until river to bluff. Okay, 4-3, let's mix about 33% 3-bet with this. I think these low cards are going to be doing some 3-betting. Double check that. Yep, there's a little bit of 3-bet with that hand. Checking flop here. On the turn we have what we call tier 4, which is like the middle of our range, which is too bad to be betting. Not good enough to value bet, too good to bluff. And on the river, I don't believe there's any value to be had here. I think this is just going to be a check. So interesting, he's going with pot again here, just like he did the last time. I think in theory my hand is a definite call. The question is how much do I want to like read into this and start playing in some different way. Probably not that much. I think I just want to play a solid strategy. If I think the hand is a call in theory, I don't want to start pure folding it just because the last time this player did this, they had value. If they're playing a good strategy, they're going to be kind of balanced there. And I don't really want to just assume that somebody is that face up, that they're just only going to have value bets in that node just because they had a value bet before. I think that would be a good example of over adjustment. Against this larger size, I think we need to fold the queen four. And I will show you my graph at the end of the session. We'll see how well I did effectively. Okay, Queen Jack. I, I, I honestly don't know what the frequency is for three betting that hand yet. It's a little bit actually. Man, so many hands that don't look like three bets are actually three bets. I need to start three betting more. I am not three betting enough here. I'm using too much of a six max approach. I think this has to at least call. I don't think it raises. 
I think this is probably a pure call and my races will be things that have less showdown value and more backdoors. I think this is just a very good like powerhouse showdown value calling hand and heads up. I know it's queen high, it doesn't feel like it is, but villain shouldn't be for the larger sizing C betting, tons of king X and A6. I don't think the turn is a call, but this is where it gets really tricky. I think all 4x would call here and some ace high. This hand I expect to be no longer a bluff catcher. I think villain could be bluffing maybe with, I, I don't think so actually, but maybe like some king x, king low, something like that. But I don't think so. Nevertheless, I think I block bluffs and I don't know. It wouldn't shock me if that was a call actually. It wouldn't absolutely shock me. But my post swap is obviously just shaky and, and heads up. I'm not used to these ranges. Ace jack offsuit strikes me as way too good to be four betting surely. So I'm just going to call the three bet here. I'm a sort of unknown player. 863 Monotone, this is probably the kind of board that's not bad for Villain actually. Villain may think this isn't a good board for them, I think it probably is okay. This is good sizing, I think this opponent's probably a reg, given that. In terms of my defense here, do I need to defend like two offsuit broadways that aren't diamonds? I don't think so, but stranger things have happened as heads up, maybe my hand is some kind of mix of call. I don't think it can be a pure call, but yeah this is tough. Not knowing a game and stepping into it for the first time, you know. You heads up specialists out there can feel free to absolutely shout at me for this or for all my keenness play. Okay, let's go low frequency with all of these. Let's remember to mix them in as three bits. Just glancing at my range chart here, I can see that these offsuit hands are, they are doing quite a bit of three betting in general. So we do want to be mixing that in. How do I want to approach flop against this sizing? I think I would like to mix a bit of raise. I will call this time as I roll it, but I think mixing some raise here is definitely good. And against turn, I think an easy call. I don't see why we would bother raising here. We're losing to overpair seven and straight. And I think we just have an incredibly good. I think we have a value beater. I think we do beat some of villain's value bets, but we also block the hands that we're beating, like the made hands that we're beating. Unfortunate river, a lot of stuff getting there now. Eight nine already got there, of course. He checks back trips, which that strikes me as a bit too tight. I think you still have to value bet trips on that node. Probably just comfortable bet fold against pool, but I think you do have to value bet that hand on that node which is interesting. A6, I'm going to guess this some 3-bet with all of these hands. Let's go like 33%. I don't know if that's right. Oh, A6 is like the one offsuit ace that isn't 3-betting. What a load of shit. That's like the median hand that doesn't 3-bet. Ace 8 and A6 don't 3-bet. Whatever. Do I want to build a donk range heads up? No, because I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. So let's refrain. I think villain should play this spot as mostly check with a bit of small bet. You could build big bet here too, but it really comes down to how often I'm finding my three bets pre with, with a lot of hands. This is a very good card for my range, a very good board for my range as well. And I think in this spot, I can lead everything for block. It seems like a valid strategy. Villain is somewhat uncapped by the presence of that turn card. Villain snap calls. I think this hand on the river is either going to be, I mean, there's some 7x, 5x, but I think it's either block or check, and I'm going to go with block. I think after calling turn here, river is going to be under bluff. I just, I just don't see that many hands that are low showdown value making it to that river and feeling like they want to bluff. It's probably the case that villain has to start bluffing some ace x miss spade there or something in order to bluff enough, or at least king x of spades, and, or king of spades x, I mean, and I'm not sure that's really happening, so let's just go for that play. Okay, monotone boards will just stick to a third. I don't think this hand is a pure bet. I think it will bet very often, let's say like two thirds of the time. We do roll a bet this time, as you can see. You guys can see the RNG now, so I can't lie about it and you know start blasting off just because I feel like it. But like, guys, the RNG told me to, honest. Is this a pure bet on the turn? This is the question I have to answer for myself here. I don't think it is, but I think people will over raise their flushes in reality. So as an exploit, I'm going to pure bet this hand. I think it's probably a mix in GTO, but I could be wrong. It could be a pure bet. I think it'll be high frequency, certainly. King 9, these hands do have... This one is so mediocre. Like, really? Even this one? Surely not this one, right? Let's check the range. King 9 off. Yeah, it does have a little bit. I think against weaker player half stack, though, the value of 3-betting this hand is going to go down a bit. There's going to be some jam and stuff like that. I mean, maybe not. But I, I think people will possibly under-open. Like they'll open too tight and then they'll over defend to three bet and over jam or something so i think it's okay this player has struck me as kind of passive so far i don't really know though i'm gonna start with check here i'm gonna be checking a lot of my range and probably just using over bet as played i definitely have a hand that's good enough to over bet is there a reason not to over bet here i don't actually think so villain still has a lot of bluff catcher i'm gonna go ahead and over bet yeah this timing 
is like he's got the auto fold box ticked. I refuse to accept there's a bot that's 50 big blinding at 50 NL. That just seems like so pathetic, but you never know. Okay, King 6 off is going to be an open. This could be a reg. I'm going to tag them as a reg for now. And I don't think we ever do anything with this hand against 3-bit. My preflop is really ropey in this game for sure. Definitely feeling it. King 9 against 3x. King 9 suited is really, it, again, it just strikes me as middling, but it's actually quite good. And heads up, it's much better than it would be normally. So if you think about these suited broadways, usually they are 3 bets a lot of the time out of the big blind and 6 max. And heads up, they're actually even stronger. I think they can still 3 bet on the 69. I guess we 3 bet. I don't know. What's the frequency for that? Quite high. Looks quite high anyway. A7 for mono. I think I want to use like smaller sizes. I think this will be a strategy that people will struggle to defend against. So I'm just going to elect to do this with basically range. I don't think this is like the GTO frequency. I think you're meant to check a bunch of the time. Don't think we can continue with this hand. But I think people will just have a hard time dealing with that strategy. I don't really like going any bigger there because I feel like people's ranges are going to be quite inelastic to sizing. Like they're quite likely to react kind of optimally, more optimally, let's say, to a bigger bet than a smaller one. So let me know what you think about the format. As you can see, it's getting closer to Christmas. I'm trying out a few different formats. I was four tabling previously. Now I'm battling heads up. Jack Deuce, I think we need to open. Let's double check though. Yeah, absolutely. No, Jack 3 is an open. Jack Deuce is a fold. Okay, noted. Slightly too wide there. Just calibrating. Trying to get a feel for this game. Kind of hard to crush this pool because there's not a lot of action actually. You have to like play a lot of hands to get into any interesting spots. Queen 7 here going to be, I think, a mix of call and fold, wasn't it? Okay, we rolled above below 50. Aggressive numbers are the low ones for me. And against range, but I do want to play a lot of raises. I feel like this one is probably just a pure call, though. One mistake you can make against range bet for sure is not raising enough. I don't think you can fold Queen 7, like second pair on the board with Live Kicker, given how wide you called flop. I think we definitely have to peel again here. Sometimes I like to take an extra second before checking when I am actually planning on folding the river. Just in case it dissuades bluffing. And Villain is like absolutely snapping. It's, it's almost as if they're bots. What do you think, guys? Vote now. Are they bots? Are people building bots on PokerStars and playing 50 NL heads up? I tell you what, the game that certainly doesn't seem good, that's for sure. Aren't a lot of weaker players in this game. What do I think is going on here? I probably have a hand that should mostly fold in theory. I don't know. It's really, it's really hard to say. Snap timing is kind of ominous because it's like if Villain is bluffing and they're snapping and they're not a bot, then they don't have any hand selection. They're just basically auto betting, which is why I think I should actually call there. I think it's actually more likely Villain is over bluffing with that timing because value bet wise, you have to think about it. You have to calibrate a little bit. I actually like call the more I think about it. Okay, I think against men, I need to be peeling 6-5. Do you three bet 6-5 off? No, it's just one of these hands that's a bit too bad. You just call. Okay, you're going to be using B75 here when I lead. I think you can also check raise. I should have actually check raised on that number, but who cares? That's not the, th the sort of thing that's going to really affect your win rate. 6-4 offsuit. believe you can just about fold this one. No, it's an open. 5-3 is a mix. Okay, noted. So as you can see, all of my instincts are just a little bit too tight for heads up. But this is more of a lesson in preflop because we haven't had a whole lot of post-flop spots that are super interesting. But hopefully the preflop is, is useful, like setting the scene a little bit. Hopefully it's entertaining as well. Sixes, I think you can definitely three bet or call. It's just mix. I don't really know the frequency. Let's see what it was. Pure three bet all the way down to sixes. Wow. I'm really not applying enough pressure. I'm so passive compared to these charts. It's actually sickening. Okay, median of range. Absolutely no reason to be betting this hand. I think check call here is kind of obvious with this hand on this texture. I've actually not seen this player give up once yet, and so many of these lines just appear to me to be like overbluffed population exploit lines. Okay, he has trips this time, but he's like snap betting. It's almost like he's playing some kind of rigid game plan where he's just like snap applying pressure in spots. So I'm gonna look to like over defend a bit against this player. Okay, 8x sure as one value hand they can have, but again, it's a spot that'll be pretty easy to overbluff, I think. Can I crush 50 and L? Heads up, the idea is so far no. It would seem not. I'm in net preflop and I'm paying people off when they have it and probably folding to them when they're bluffing. So, so no. Ace 4-4. Four, four. I think I want to... Okay, if I'm playing small bet, this is like almost a value bet now. Heads up is so bizarre. It's like so different. Okay, let's let's mix a bit of bet with this. I think it's probably mostly check. It depends on the frequency I want to bet at overall. Yeah, this game actually sucks. 
My conclusion is that there is basically no reason to play this game. Okay, so Villain is repping like good ace x and 4x, he's like playing a completely well constructed strategy. I think my hand is a pure call. On the river I will need to like mix volt with this hand, there's no way it's going to be a pure continue. I do have ace x to call with as well. And the jack blocker is kind of bad. I'll fold this time. I don't think this is a very good game to try and play. It's probably very like time of day dependent. It depends how many weaker players are actually in the pool. Did I just fold a hand I meant to call? It's so hard when you're used to playing 6 max to not just want to keep doing that. Yeah, I just folded a hand I need to call against 2.5 certainly. Against 3 that one's probably close to break even, but yeah, you need to like wake up a bit when you're playing heads up and make sure that you're not, not being way too tight. Mix a little bit 4 bet with this, not this time. Can we call a 3 bet with this? I don't think so, but again, like my instincts could just be way too tight. Oh, you can actually mix a tiny bit of call and a tiny bit of 4 bet apparently. Hmm. So we know with these offsuit aces we're going to be mixing a little bit, let's go 33% 3-bet with this. But yeah, the regs that are playing this game actually seem quite good, they, they feel like they're playing like really formulaically, and that they'd be really tough to beat. 4 flush is fairly bad for my range, I don't have like as much offsuit stuff as Villain does, I think this hand is too medium to bet, I think you can block River here though. You could also check if you think your opponent's going to over bluff this node. Hey, River's trips. But yeah, it's weird to feel like, normally I feel like somewhat the expert. Just now I just feel like a bit of a fish. But it's interesting, it's good to challenge yourself. Play formats that you're not used to. This is a pure 3-bet, I remember this one. I mean, it's all the way down to like 6s is a pure 3-bet here. I remember this is a pure jam against 4-bet as well. Hopefully we get a bit of action here. Okay, top set. Here we go. Let's do something. Sizing-wise, I guess I can still use large bets. I think I can check sometimes. Let's bet this like 2 thirds of the time. For large sizing. Then on turn I think we can definitely make some check if we're called here. I don't expect Villain to play much raise on this texture. It's no fun. King 8, 5 monotone. Gonna be doing quite a lot of bet on this texture. Gonna use third pot and I'm gonna bet this most of the time but not always. Green forest might make my instinct is to fold. Definitely not a fold. Is that a new player in the pool, thankfully? Playing against the same regs over and over again here. Alright, Ace Queen 8, Rainbow. Probably a board we can bet range on. I like it when they throw stuff at me because it makes it very likely that they're just impatiently waiting to fold. No one flops a set and then throws a horseshoe at your face. No one does that. 8 9, we're definitely going to be playing this one. I don't see why we couldn't 3 bet it or raise it sometimes. I think against Limp, it's mostly going to be check, but I'm going to mix some raise here actually. I don't mind this play. The idea is that there's some hands that can fold, like bigger hands than ours, like Jack-5, Queen-6, etc, that we're actually behind. I think this is low enough that we can build some raise and it's also like juicy enough in big pots that it's fine. Against someone placid, my main advice in a spot like this would be to just start off betting big. The reason being, they've already taken a really placid line preflop by limp calling. Therefore, if you check, it's kind of unlikely they're going to be a stab monkey at high frequency. Most of the time they'll be more of like a passive player that just wants to check back, make, make it the showdown, realize equity, make their hand and then invest money, that sort of thing. Jack-9 I think you can check here, and it's like pretty good at dominating the limping range, it's a little too weak to raise for value, I think Jack-10, Queen-Jack, maybe you can. This hand I think not. I'll go with check call here, I mean I don't see a better play. I'll check call turn as well against the limp range, it's just rather wide. Um, check river is probably fine, check call is probably fine as well, I just don't think they're going to value bet thinly enough there and I think they're going to bet too much top pair plus on the turn. Getting a lot of hands with this recreational player which is nice, beginning to chip up the stack a little bit now. Ace queen, I'm going to go ahead and do a 3 bet this one of course, and I'm not going to use the sizing I would use in 6 max. I, I mean I could, it's probably fine to go 12, I just have sims for 10, so that's what we're going to use. We pure jam this against 4 bet I believe. Ace-8-4 is a pretty good board for range, do I want to build any checks on this flop? Probably not, so let's just bet small. Reg is doing a good job of folding every time we have it. Check suited, this must be a pure 3-bet. What do we do against 4-bet with that one? I think we just flat, do we just flat the 4-bet? That's an interesting hypothetical actually. Or do we jam or do we mix? We probably mix, right? Let's see, so if we got 4-bet with ace-check suited, we just call, okay little bit better to call than it is to, well it's a whole big blind better actually, to call than it is to jam there. The hand's just doing a bit too well and villain's a bit too polarised. 
So yeah, there's a bit less jamming actually in Heads Up because the 3-bit range is actually more polarised. It's a lot more hot and cold than normal. Ace 5, let's roll 33% 3-bit with this. I don't think we've even made a 3-bit bluff yet because either we forgot to do it or we've just rolled a call. This hand, I mean, it's kind of interesting. This is clearly a high frequency raise in 6 max and Heads Up, the hand does have more showdown value. That said, I don't think it has too much showdown value to raise, especially with the Ace of Hearts. So let's go 60% raise here. And the sizing, I want to go something like this. I'll play a strategy that does raise a lot of top pair on this node. But yeah, even though that hand is ahead of like most of the villains folding range, it's still going to be useful to raise it for a few reasons. We'll be able to pop build, we'll be able to get folds from really live cards, and we obviously have that nutted ability. That's what I mean by pop build. We'll be able to sometimes make the nuts on certain nodes when we've built a big pot. Against the Recreational, I prefer just leading this until I know that they're not stabby. If they're stabby, checking back King-9 here is kind of a disaster because you have to fold it on most turn cards. So if Villain is over probing, which a lot of people are, I think you just want to be checking back a slightly bulkier range, some B-tier range that can handle that, and betting something like the King-9. 5-7, a behemoth of a hand, a Colossus, and heads up. Back 7, I see no reason why we couldn't be 3-betting this. Maybe our opponent is underfolding to 3-bets. Is this the guy that limped? I don't actually remember. I'm still just going to roll this because while people do underfold, I think they also do a bad job of defending. Let's just 3-bet this time, actually. We'll go to 11 against the stack instead of 12. 63, I think this hand's probably the majority of the time a 3-bet. I would guess. Jack 7 suited. Okay, it's about half and half the charts, but yeah. Just because a recreational player is over-defending a little bit, and maybe they are, maybe they aren't, we don't actually know. If they under 4-bet you, you get so much more realizability that maybe it is actually good to overbluff against them to 3-bet some really quite bad hands. Because fold equity now is not the full story, it's not the full game tree. You also really have to think about how often they 4-bet. And I think a recreational player is really going to do a bad job of 4-bet bluffing enough. 7-3 suited, this is surely an open. By far. Get a bit small again, same reason that when I don't know the player is not stabby, this is going to be good. This is a really interesting node where Villain has a lot more folds than you would think. I wonder if I can block here and just get like naked one pair to overfold and then give up. I think I can. Okay, apparently not. I was wondering if, well, maybe not that one pair, but I was thinking there's just a lot of like naked Jack X, Queen X, etc. Villain obviously makes the nuts a lot. Block just seems to make a lot of sense on that node. Let's go to eight big blinds against this with the pocket potatoes. You guys know the drill with the potatoes. Gotta make it eight. It off massively profitable open ace queen nine weaker player strategy just going to be the bet here with a hand like this it's going to struggle on certain turns against probe and it's going to be like a very high frequency bet in game theory anyway four seven off not an open pocket queens let's go a bit of action here i'd really like to finish this session in the green i'm going to play for another i don't want to make this video too long for my editor another five minutes and then i'm going to wrap it so let's hope we can like stack someone between now and then. It's been a pretty uneventful session so far, which is kind of a shame when you're making a video, but that's the way it goes sometimes. If you like this format, I can make more of this. I think Pure Bet going to be using large sizing on this flop, so let's bet big. On this turn card, it's not unheard of to overbet. There is 7-8 offsuit kicking around, but who cares? The ranges are really wide. Let's go for a large bet again here, and I think it's pure. I won't overbet this card. If the turn was like a total brick, like I can consider over betting. There aren't that many total bricks on that texture though. So there'll be a lot of B75ing going on on both flop and turn there. Also villains meant to be slightly less capped after they call B75 than if they called B33 on the flop, which is worth bearing in mind. Uh, are we in the green now? I don't know. With one back like half a stack, it's 50 NL, I don't really care if I would like to be in the green. King 9 offsuit, you can do a little bit of call and a little bit of 3 bet here. I'm gonna go 20, 20, 60. We roll a 4 bet, okay. Let's not make it too big. Let's go like 26. That should be fine. This might be overfolded too as well, depending on how people construct. Just because in heads up, you're not going to be seeing that much 4-bet bluffing from random people, I guess, at these stakes. Although, there do seem to be plenty of regs here. 10-5 suited, I think we go like 75% rebet here. That's actually call though. Is that right? Oh, it's more call than 3-bet? Okay, whatever. Who cares? The frequencies are really arbitrary, guys. Like, don't worry about the frequencies at all. They just don't matter. Easy defend here. River is a spot I could see people bluffing too much in, actually. I mean, I'm always like on that side of the fence, though, because like when you start bluffing, it's really hard to keep your frequencies in check. Because, like, say you bet pot on the river, you're meant to have two value hands to one bluff there. And when you start off and heads up with some really wide ranges, that'll be tough. 
Let's mix the swap. Go for about 50% bet with this hand. Easy call. Easy check. Villain's already polarized, so there's not going to be any reason to bet River even on some safer cards. Definitely not on that card. Okay, guys, last three hands. Let's do this. Let's win a stack so we can end up in the green and say that we crushed heads up. Obviously, this is like ludicrous over a small sample. We're talking about whether you can crush a stake only on YouTube. Can I crush a stake by playing 100 hands? A complete load of nonsense. Betting this time. I think you can check this sometimes, but usually we're going to bet. We're going to use big bets in this texture. There are theoretical reasons for that. I won't bore you with them right now. You guys are like, tell me the reasons, Pete. I need to know. Okay, set out next hand. Play this one, then we will set out. King Jack, this could be the hand where we stack villain. Could be the hand where we finish in the green. This experiment. With the heart, and mm, I don't really know what this means, actually. I don't think it means a lot. I think villain is supposed to call turn here, call flop here with worse king x, so this is in some sense like a, a thin value bet, I believe. When villain raises, like, and we've bet really wide, I think we need to be kind of careful. This is a spot that we could overfold, like, very easily. That said, with no spade and the jack of hearts, I will fold. I think this is, like, the wrong king jack to call, but king jack of some suits is probably going to continue there if it's even meant to bet flop. But yeah, interesting stuff. Let's bring up a graph. Let's see how we did in our 50 zoom heads up session. Can I crush 50 zoom heads up? The answer would appear to be no. There are a few reasons for this. One, I played like less than 100 hands, so who the hell cares? Two, I didn't know what I was doing preflop and made a few inaccuracies there. Three, people were just playing some game plan for heads up that they had hashed out and I hadn't. How would I recommend these games to you? I wouldn't. I thought that was a dreadful pull. It had regs that were sort of autopiloting really quickly with like some kind of preset game plan that probably does well. It's a more solvable game, so people can be more prepared just to do certain things over and over again. I would say the skill cap in Heads Up is arguably lower than in some other forms of the game in the sense that there are less spots for you to have to navigate, so it's easier to learn. But it's harder in another sense and the ranges are really wide and difficult to handle. They're kind of like untamed animals that are really difficult to play. So hopefully you enjoyed this festive content and it's something a little bit different. I will see you back here for more sort of routine, instructive 6 max stuff, which is the norm. Don't forget Cash Injection is on sale on Carrot Corner. Check out our site for solved ranges, including the heads up one that you saw today. I'll see you for another video very soon. Bye for now, guys. Thanks.